Hey guys, and welcome to this new short series about taking the most popular custom front-end framework in React and Next.js and mixing it with the most popular CMS in the world, WordPress. Now we'll be taking uh, Next.js and using it with a headless WordPress setup. We'll be using Tailwind CSS, Daisy UI, and Vercel uh, to host it. Um, amongst many other things, but I think this is going to be a good one, especially if you want this for a portfolio or if you just want to do this for a client or if you want to create your own blog, you may enjoy what we're about to cover. So let's get started and have a look at what we're actually going to be building. So on a very basic level, we have this project here. So I've gone ahead and created it already. And what we have here is a very basic blog. Uh, we've got the title here, um, a little bit of information. And again, this is all made in Next.js. But the most interesting thing is that this is all using uh, WordPress as an endpoint, really, because that's what we've reduced it to. But you can still log into WordPress and still use all the back end uh, CMS stuff, create post pages, um, add plugins, use Gutenberg and all that fun stuff. So if you go here, we can see that we can have our own post. Uh, we've got several posts. Um, we even have a light and dark mode, and this is all powered with, uh, Tailwind CSS and Daisy UI. What we want to do is make sure that we sign up for our WordPress site. So this is essentially going to be our database. Now a good one to go to is 000 web host. And essentially this is one of the few sites in the world where you can actually set up a WordPress site, but still install plugins and, and do all the normal WordPress stuff you can do. And it's completely free. So if you sign in here in the top right corner and then log in and create your account, you'll be brought to this page. So then we'll click create new website. And we'll type in curious, uh, WordPress blog, and we'll say this application is for WordPress and create. So we have our admin details that we need to set up for WordPress. So you can set it to whatever you want. I've got admin and then I'll set the password, uh, set it to whatever you want and click install. All right. So we can see that our website has now been installed. Um, the installation just kind of ends. So if it shows like there's no progress, don't worry about it. Um, just click off it and then you should see your website in the top left and then just click that. And there we go. That's our, uh, WordPress blog. So if we grab that and then we'll go to WP admin, which is how we log into our WordPress admin traditionally, make sure we log in and there we go. We've got some ads running, which is fine. And close that there's some of this stuff don't need it all um now one of the first things we need to do is make sure that we install uh, wp graphql which is what is going to make this all work so we'll go to add new on the left in the plugin section and then we will search for wp wp graphql and we can see it's here click install now activate and there we go. We click the GraphQL uh, logo on the left admin menu, and we can see that we now have uh, a GraphQL playground uh, available to us. So we can try this out. So we'll go and have a look at some posts and uh, we'll check the nodes and we'll check ID, title and date. So if we press run on that, we can see we've currently got one post uh, called hello world and it's returning a date. Uh, which is fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to add some new posts and edit the old post as well. So we'll go to hello world here and you can see that we can use Gutenberg here. Uh, we'll go to uh, featured image, set featured image, and then we'll update that. Go back to our WordPress, go to GraphQL. Remember, uh, make sure to grab our URL of our WordPress uh, because essentially what our GraphQL endpoint is, is our WordPress website URL forward slash GraphQL now since we've installed this. And you can see now that we have our endpoint, uh, we're all set up. So let's go back 
It's saying we've got a bad request. We didn't request anything there. Let's set up our Next.js front end to actually connect to this. So let's open up our terminal and let's install our Next app. Now, what we're going to be using one of Next.js's own examples for starting a project, and it's called CMS WordPress. So it, this is from the Next.js official website, this example and this starter. And what this does is this gets you started with a headless WordPress uh, set up with Next.js very, very quickly. So head on down to here. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description. Um, but essentially the command I've shown you is what all of this is. Uh, obviously give it a name. So we've called it Next.js WP blog. Uh, you can call it whatever you want but that will just create the folder and then you can put it all in there. Right, we can see that's all finished and set up. So if we just go up here, we can see some of the dependencies it's already installed for us. It's installed TypeScript, which is great. Uh, Next.js obviously, and it's uh, put in some class names for us. Um, and auto prefixer, post CSS and Tailwind CSS. So these are all the things that we wanted except for one thing. So we'll make sure to go into the directory. And then what we need to do is install Daisy UI. Now, if you don't know what Daisy UI is, Daisy UI is a fantastic Tailwind CSS uh, library. Uh, it has a lot of uh, components built in simply by using class names. So it's still using the uh, CSS uh, utility functionality to add these components. And some of these animations are absolutely beautiful and it's a really quick way to start getting going, especially if you're using Tailwind. You don't have to faff around with configurations or trying to make sure that it's in your web pack or whatever it is you're trying to use. It's just uh, really easy to get on with. Uh, let's go open that up. So you can see that's installed. It's added a readme. Uh, it's added our components. So these are all the default WordPress components that you'll need. A lot of the stuff to do with posts, titles, headers, a lot of the things that are set up in WordPress itself, it's already been created for you, which is always handy. Uh, another good thing is uh, your posts have all been set up here. So we've got a dynamic uh, routing set up for your post names. So let's go to our index. Uh, we've got Next.js blog example with CMS name. We'll just delete this and we'll go to our constants and type change this to curious blog. Okay, All right, let's go check this out. npm run dev. All right, so we're getting an error. It's saying that we don't have a valid WordPress instance. So I would imagine, yep, so in our emv.local, let's just rename this. We'll remove the example and we'll turn it into a working URL. And what we do is we go and grab our URL that we had. So this website that we've set up, so this website, this WordPress website we set up initially, we can now start to use. So we'll come back here and we'll type in forward slash GraphQL after the link. And that should be set up now. So if we were to now do npm run dev, seems to be working. So let's go check out the URL. And we can now see that this is the post that we set up earlier with the featured image and it is now showing. So we've successfully created our WordPress instance for free. We've hosted it online. We've amended a post and we've also set up our front end with Tailwind CSS, TypeScript and Daisy UI. Now we're not done just yet. We're going to add a few more posts and we're going to add a little bit of theming and then that should help set us up for our project. And then we'll start working on the rest of the site and make it a proper blog. So to start with, uh, let's just change the name here. So it says uh, blog. We're going to change that to a curious blog. So what we want to do is we want to go to header here and just type in curious blog or we can use our constants here and that'll uh, bring that in from here, uh, from our constants file. So if we refresh that now, so we can see that this is working, but it's working here. We want to amend this one. So let's go down to see where it could be. So let's go to intro and then change this to CMS name. And there we go, that has changed. Um, and then we, what, what we want to do, 
make a few other slight changes. So it says the source code for this blog is available on GitHub. We want to change that. So we'll go to alert. Brilliant. Um, so we've changed that now. And this here is just checking to see if this is in preview mode. If it is, it'll just show that. Um, but otherwise, uh, it'll show this text. So we can see now that that is uh, showing at the top there. We'll go back to intro and just slightly change this. And we'll just say statically generated blog using Next.js. Just slightly delete this. So Next.js WordPress Tailwind CSS. There we go. That's a little updated. Um, let's add some new posts. Uh, so close that down, close that down. Let's go here, uh, go to some posts. Um, and let's add some new ones. We love blogging. We love to blog all the merry day long. Tra la 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 la. There we go. And we'll add a featured image. Go to post, set featured image. And we'll add another post. And we'll just say we love Next.js. Uh, add a featured image for that. So if we go here and refresh, brilliant. And then if we click this Next.js one up here, we can see that it automatically takes us to the post. So we say, we love Next.js. We haven't edited the page or the post page yet, uh, but you can see that it's dynamically created. So remember the file name that uh, the page that just said posts and slug, so it was doing dynamic routing. It was essentially taking the slug of the post from Next.js, which was that, and turning it into the page. And we have our own page, so we can take that, copy and paste it, and send it to someone else when we upload it, and uh, upload it there. So we have the basics of our blog. Uh, what we want to do is carry on with our setup we have just a little bit more to do. We've got to set up our tailwind. So in our tailwind.config file in the root, we just need to add our plugin information at the bottom for Daisy UI. So we just say that we require Daisy UI and we want to use the themes light and synth wave. Now you can choose whichever themes you want. I'll show you some of them now. So if we go to themes and Daisy UI, you can see they've got a whole bunch of themes. So I'm going to use Synthwave, which is this kind of purple. This is a kind of a purple theme. So if you've got VS Code, this is a really popular theme on there. So we're going with Synthwave and Light Mode. And then what we're going to do is add a theme toggler component. So let's go do that now. So we'll go to Components, create a new folder. So theme toggler. Create uh, an index file. I'm going to make sure that we export this. Cool, that's exported. And we've got our theme toggler here. So let's grab that and go to our intro. And just about here. What we'll actually need to do is wrap this in a fragment, add our theme toggler file here. So let's get that back. Brilliant. So we've got our theme toggler component here. Let's go have a look at that. And we can see that that is appearing up there. So we'll go to our theme toggler file and we'll add our code for our theme toggle. So this is our theme toggler component. And we can see here that we're setting some state here. Uh, we're dealing with local storage here. So we're trying to save our theme choice with our theme toggle because essentially it's a switch component, true or false. And that choice is being saved in local storage with theme mode as the key name. And then we're going to use some React state to set the theme here with the default being local storage. And then we're just going to set the toggle state for the UI or the input uh, here in this state. Now we've got a toggle theme handler. Uh, in fact, we should name it that just so we know that it's handling the toggle of the input. 
Um, and what it's doing is this is where all the magic happens. Uh, we're setting the theme uh, and we're, we're checking to see uh, if it's uh, false. If so, then it's synth wave and light. And then we're setting the uh, local storage here uh, with a target value. And then we're making sure that we're also setting it in local storage here. So these both are setting it in local storage. And then we're just uh, setting the uh, input state here. And when we add this bang here, it essentially just toggles between. Um, and then this is our input component here and our label that's attached to it. It's got some uh, basic uh, Tailwind CSS styling and some uh, Daisy UI uh, uh, component styling. Uh, so this will add the toggle uh, input animations and styling from Daisy UI and then just some basic layout styling to center it with flex. And that's it really, that's our theme toggle. Uh, let's go have a look at that. And then we're obviously using a use effect here for our state and we're including uh, the theme as a dependency. Okay, let's take a look. So we can see up here, we've got our theme toggle. So if we click that, we can now see that that is toggling our theme. Now we see there's an issue up here uh, this doesn't actually have any styling. Uh, that's because it's not connected to the theme. So if it's not connected to the theme, it's not going to really switch in and out. Uh, the rest of it is, as you can see, uh, yeah, you can see all the text here except for the footer, uh, but we will change the footer later. But let's fix this alert for now. Uh, so let's go and sort that out. Grab this, put this in a P element, and we'll add a class name. So all we simply do is add text base, save that. So I think what we'll do is rather than just using text base here, uh, let's tidy all of this up. Now we're not gonna need this preview uh, section anymore. So let's just go and tidy all of this up. Get rid of this prop and get rid of that. So there we go. So we've got our basic styling there. Um, we're adding uh, some padding uh, along the uh, bottom. So we're adding some bottom padding, uh, some centering the text, and we're making sure that the text size is small. Um, and then when we add the toggle, we can see that that switches very nicely. You can see a little animation as well. And there we go. I think that's a really good uh, starting point. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to carry on working on this. We're going to start to bring this to life and make this a lot better. We're going to uh, work on the header and the footer and just tidy up uh, some of these uh, blog posts here and make it a lot better. So I hope you've enjoyed the journey so far in this series. Uh, we've only just really scratched the surface. Yes, we've got set up, but we've got a lot more styling, a lot more components to set up and just a lot more fun stuff ahead. If you've been having fun so far setting up your own headless WordPress blog with Next.js, um, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, we've got a lot to go and then we're going to launch this on Vercel itself. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video.